What's going on, guys? Sorry about if you guys get some poor connection, but I'm just putting tackle and stuff away that's been sent to the house and stuff, and I figured, you know, if you guys have questions or if this has very bad connection, we might have to move you over here to the rod rack then, or one of the rod racks. So, let's see if you can't get better service over here. And you guys, I'll let you guys put you guys closer over here, and that way you guys can see the. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, about uh, different tackle, but oh my gosh, this is a new mini tripod that I'm trying out here. So I apologize if it's not the most stable, but it's for my phone, and so we'll give it a shot. Let's see. All right. So how are we doing, everybody? Is everybody doing all right tonight? Um, so I, I, like I said before, I've been trying to put some stuff away. I've been cleaning it up a lot lately, and. Uh, I figure while I'm going through my different tackle and stuff, I just talk to you guys about what it is that I that I got and what it is that I'm doing with it and stuff. So um, if I don't see any chat, uh, I'm just gonna ramble. But if I if I do see chat or if I don't see chat rather, then um, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because I'm looking around doing other stuff. So biggest update uh, is let's see where is it. So I. A very good friend of mine, and probably one of the best bosses I've ever worked for, <laughs> um, my friend Rick, uh, had an extra tattoo laying around, and so I am uh, going to give myself a, a little run here for the tattoo. I've never used one before, and so um, that's a Daiwa, and uh, that's going to be on my, uh, it's on a medium heavy, a seven foot medium heavy um, for, for throwing uh, spinner baits and stuff. Oh, look at me, I'm going around smacking stuff. Has anybody in the chat ever fished a Tatula or any other Daiwa reel that they uh, they care to share? I'm sorry I'm losing losing people, but this is more about just showing you some uh, everyday stuff that I do. Some more stuff that, that uh, Rick uh, left for me. So we have, um, I, I re I'll never throw this except for maybe for the occasional muskie. I'll keep it in my car in case I'm fishing a point or a pier and I see... Uh, big lurking stalker, but uh, this is called the six-inch stalker. Um, I know Alex Red probably throws baits that are probably just big enough like this for bass, but around here, this is musky. This is a musky uh, uh, bait. Uh, hit an extra Yozuri, uh, this is the flat crank. Hey, what's going on, New England? And um, this is a this is a floating, you know, crank, and so I'm gonna put this away in the box. What's going on, Bass Bros? So. Uh, I don't know if you guys have followed my Instagram. If you don't, you should. It's at twig, the letter N, and timber. But um, I, you know, I, I've used quite a few different tackle boxes. I'm a Plano fan for sure. But uh, lately, you know, just trying to consolidate. Look at the color on that. That's pretty awesome. Um, trying to consolidate, I, uh, I decided to pick up a couple of these at Home Depot. This is, uh, these are called... Uh, the HDX boxes, and um, are you asking about the about the uh, the Ozuri here? No, it's a crank. Um, it is a floating though, so you can you can run it and then let it float and run it and let it float. And these things actually all lock together. These HDX boxes, and um, they're only like eight bucks a piece. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna try and and expand on these. And um, I agree, Bass Bros. Um, Bass Fly right now, Bunny Leech is great. Um, but so is, uh, I mean, I like throwing big, like, bunny, like, us. actually, hold on, right here. I'll show you. This is my bass outfit rigged up right here. And instead of taking the whole thing off the wall, I will just show you the fly. I posted on Instagram, and if you guys don't follow my Instagram, um, chartreuse in white. Uh, it actually floats hook up, so the chartreuse is on the top. It's hard to see with my phone, but it's actually very bright. Um, and then also red and white, blue and white, um, White right now seems to be a good color for me around here. I actually catch pike in this too on accident. So, um, but I actually, if I wanted to target pike, then I go articulated. But I typically don't target pike when I'm bass fishing. It's just a happy coincidence. But I usually, because I I fish with fluorocarbon, they they bite me off. What else did Rick leave me? Another random arashi. This is a uh, a five footer. So that's cool. Um, it's a square bill. So. Uh, it's by Storm. Uh, let's see what else is in this box. He also left fireworks and all these random things too. Um, 
This year, uh, it's actually now legal for in New York to have fireworks. Um, it wasn't before, but our fireworks have to be below the waist height or sparklers. Um, Southern boy is probably going to pick on me for that, but there's that. Let's see, what else? Um, looks like a, oh nice, I have a rattle trap. This is, um, what color is this? This is the Supernatural series. It's a, uh, it's a lipless. Really dig that. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, I don't really throw too many of that body shape, but uh, it is what it is. He left me a an X wrap. Sweet. Um, let's see if I can get this open. And this is the. Uh, let's see. Yellow perch, which is awesome. Look at that. That's actually a great paint. Um, what is this? It's a random, looks like an ultralight reel. This is a Daiwa Strike Force. Oh, it's a thousand size. What's up, RKO? Basically, guys, for those of you guys who just showed up, um, I'm just kind of going through my tackle that's been sitting in my garage, trying, to, and I'm trying to put some stuff away. And I figured I'd talk to you guys. And, uh, Looks like some Vanish Mono, a couple floats, a couple of random pink, really almost one ounce jig heads and stuff. But uh, trying to go through some stuff. If you guys have questions about fishing stuff, you know, like feel free to ask. And I'm sure that our, um, you know, those guys in the chat who know they're talking about can help out. But I'm just kind of to go through and, and talk about some different stuff that's, that, I'm, that I'm working on and whatever. So. Recently sent this uh, this fly reel by Fishing Sir. Fishing Sir is is an up and coming um, Asian market, but uh, they sent me these reels, and I'm really actually a very big fan. It's a very well made reel, um, very smooth. It's actually fairly well balanced, and this reel I think is like maybe 70, 60 bucks because it's a it's a nine weight reel. Or er, I'm sorry, yeah, it's a, it's a seven nine reel. And so, those of you guys who don't know, for backing, I typically will run like 65 pound braid just for my backing with um, an arbor knot to start and a, uh, and a um, what do you call it, perfection loop uh, to uh, connect it to my fly line. Um, I'm going to be trying, where is it over here? Um, It's also a really inexpensive fly, ride, fly line that uh, I'm going to give a shot. Um, I have so many lines that it's hard to swallow 80 bucks, 60 bucks, even 30 bucks. So this is actually a $7 line. It's a, it's an intermediate line I'm going to try. But um, let's see, what else? Big news coming up. That fishing sir also sent me some a, a portable electronic fish finder. And when I looked at this... The the actual the screen and stuff is awesome. I'll have to I'll, I'm gonna do a review of it soon here because I'm gonna be heading out for some deeper water bass and some perch and stuff. And I mean in this in the simulation mode it's awesome. So uh, I'm hoping that it actually performs as well as it looks. As good as it looks. <laughs> what else here? Oh yeah. So, I am heading to a uh, on a salt trip here very soon. It's not actually specific for that. It's actually a family vacation. We're heading to North Carolina. We're gonna be, be at the Outer Banks, and I've never been salt fishing before. What's up, Ken? And uh, so I picked up some stuff to make leaders. I have a I have, you know 16 pound salt. Uh, Alloy hard by Rio, and I have 20 pound alloy hard by Rio, and I'm gonna actually do. Um, I'm running an intermediate line. I'm gonna do some uh, uh, surf fishing that way. Um, I've never used this this tip before, and so I'm hoping that a uh, it holds up, and b RK RK is RKO man. It is be 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 weary about starting because then you're gonna want to spend a lot more money in it. I mean, you'd be you'd be uh, kind of shocked. There's a rack up there. I don't know if you can see. It's kind of right there with 
one, two, three, four, five rods. They're all fly rods. There's a rack behind the camera. One, two, three, four, five fly rods. I have two sitting right here in tubes, and then I also have two in the car. And they all, the East Coast, I am in uh, Western New York, so I am, I go between, my family lives in Rochester, New York, and I live in Jamestown, so right by Erie, PA. Um, in Jamestown, it's all the way southwest. Um, I have yet another action camera that I have to test. I was sent another one. This one by... What's up? Yeah, in Albany. I was in Albany the other day, actually. Not the other day, a couple weeks ago. Visiting family in New Hampshire. I was passing through, but we stayed in Albany. Um, and so I have another camera I have to try. Um, it's nice to have all these cameras, but I really like a company like Revel or GoPro to be thoroughly interested and send me a camera instead. Um, what else? Oh, I, uh, let's see. So, let's see. Out of here? Yeah. There's a garbage can. It's right here. I just see the block. What do I do with it? Okay. So that is the life of a married father right there. Um, so uh, what else? Um, so on my salt trip, I'm going to be searching for, could you chip put my channel? I don't know what you said, buddy. Oh, let me see if I can pull it up here. Hey, check out my channel. And I'm not about, I'm not, I'm not all about that whole like uh, sub for sub, buddy. I'm, I'm just kind of doing my own thing. I appreciate what you do. Um, but if I try to do that with everybody, uh, Let's see, what does it say? Is that Glendale? Yeah, it is, man. And my, my three bows are over there. Um, I actually started this channel as an archery channel specifically, and then um, that didn't really take off that well because not many archers like to listen to younger guys. I had been, been teching for six years at the time, and, um, and let's just say that um, I tried to teach some people some things, and they weren't ready to hear it from, from a young guy. So, But yeah, it is a Glendale, um, and uh, it holds up extremely well. Um, let's see, what else? Um, so on my salt trip, um, I, uh, I'm searching for blues, for specs, and for some drum, uh, that time of the year, um, in the surf. So I'm going to be hitting some, uh, and I'm going to try and take you along for the ride, but I'm going to be hitting some, uh, some, uh, sandbars and some, some things to try and, uh, hit the troughs between those and, um, get a, get them to chase a clouser or something. So, uh, we'll see, um. So we got freshwater fish, but it's most convenient to fish in. Yeah, I mean, if you're in the islands, man, why not use it, right? Um, what else? Uh, I'm trying to think what else. So, um, do you guys have any questions? you want me to show you some stuff or whatever? Just, let, I mean, whatever. Anything you want to know, anything you want to talk about, or it could be fly gear, it could be conventional gear. All my conventional rods are right there. I have um, basically one rod that kind of does everything I like to do. Um, including some ultralight stuff because I enjoy ultralight fishing. Um, uh, let's see, I have all my fly rods be and, and antique rods behind you, and then fly rods up there, a couple in the car. I have a bunch of different packs. Um, let's see, we get fresh water. Oh, sorry, somebody already said something. All right, um, I can show you my packs if that's interesting to you. I mean, uh, let's see. So, if you followed the channel for a while, you Probably have seen a couple of these. Uh, East Coast, uh, I shot Team PSE for a while, and I still love them. I feel like they're a great bang for the buck. I'm not with Team PSE anymore, but I still have three PSE bows. And um, you don't pay to have someone's name on your bow. Uh, let's just say, as a tech also, they are extremely easy to work on, and they don't have any proprietary parts that you have to worry about. Um, especially, And if you want to resell them, uh, you don't have to worry about different modules and things, which used to be an issue with most bows. 
So, for the most part, I have about mm, three of these. These are Allen. Allen's one of my sponsor companies, and they are extremely awesome. Um, I kind of just started using their stuff anyway. They got wind of it and uh, liked what I did. Um, I love these micro packs. This is the Bear Creek micro pack, and um, all their packs attached to this bag I'm getting. I'm, I actually purchased. I like it a lot. Um, it's called the Gunnel Pack. And um, oh, I see you later, RKO man. Um, again, please, if you could not spam the the chat and stuff for your own channel. Um, but good luck. Um, these attach to them, so like. Uh, and, and I'm taking that on the salt, so uh, you'll be able to see that bag. And I'm probably going to bring one of these with me um, for uh, for my bass stuff, because typically my bass boxes, the fly stuff, are a lot bigger. I carry this uh, this sling pack. It's not actually a fly bag, but it, um, it it acts very you know similarly in that fashion, and it's really comfortable. It's just it's one of the local uh, vendors make it. It actually says Chautauqua Lake, which is where I where I live. Um, and so it does a really good, I mean, it's just kind of nice to be able to pay homage to that. Um, what else? Uh, let's see. I, I do have a backpack and I have, let's see, I, I'm not sponsored by this company or anything, but, but Unigear, uh, does a really good job with all their stuff. And, uh, this is a really solid, two of these are like $25. Um, it's a, basically a watertight bag. Uh, and then, um. Uh, I keep all my camera gear and stuff like that in, in the bag. Um, um, oh, what else? Um, one of my other sponsor companies is Wetfly. Uh, Wetfly is and kind of one of the only companies that I know of similar to like an Orvis where they produce everything that you need for fly fishing except for maybe waders and things. So with the exception of, of your wading gear, hey, Southern Utah, what's going on, Gage? Um, uh, let's see, East Coast. Do you use fixed blade or mechanical? I am a firm, let's see, I am really good friends with um, the guys over at Dead Ringer. And what they're doing, Dead Ringer hunting with their broadheads, is insane. Um, as somebody who's tested all of those tests, like in uh, the steel barrels and stuff, um, they've done a really good job. I, I swear by them. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them, but I swear by them. Um, and also they're Rochester, New York guys, and they, they produce and everything in Rochester. So um, they have a very special, they use spring steel opposed to like a stainless. And so the spring steel gives, and so it doesn't shatter like your rage would um, or your muzzies even if you hit, a, hit something solid. But before, before Dead Ringer, um, that kind of does a good thing, best of both, all worlds in my opinion, um, I did shoot uh, fixed blades. So like uh, Montex or, or Muzzies, depending on what was on sale back when I was a, a younger lad. Um, so Wetfly, uh, they have uh, fiberglass, uh, graphite rods, um, thick apparel. Um, it says Wetfly back here too. Tippet, um, flies, leaders, all these different, uh, basically everything except for, except for waders and some of your other hard goods um, to get out in the water. They have packs, I think, too. And um, they're just cool dudes. Uh, I really like the any, typically any company that that is um, headed in the right direction. Uh, that uh, what's going on, Marty? Um, yeah, East Coast man. If you haven't heard of Dead Ringer, then I don't want to say you've been living under a rock. But those guys are legit in this company. They have um, an incredible track record with pros and with um, all these different other larger organizations. And uh, it's so check them out on Facebook. They always have a. a Tuesday tip also, like a tech tip. So like last week was setting up a, a D-loop or something like that. But, um, you know, I learned a lot of my teching stuff with those guys back in the day whenever we would work as, at, a, at a local shop. And it was, uh, was kind of cool. But, um, so, uh, no, it, I, I want to be with companies that have the right vision in mind, and that's education of the angler or of the, is Tailwater at least, what? Is Tailwater at least an okay brand of Tailwater? Um... I, t is that is that a sub brand of somebody Tailwater, um, or where did you buy it? I mean, typically, I mean you've seen my if you if you're part of my channel, I I fish a lot of nice rods, but at the same time, man, I have so many rods that are less than fifty bucks that it's it's nuts. And guess what? They all catch fish. It just depends on how qualified or adept you are to fishing those rods. Um, you know, it is true that you typically will get higher quality finish and things um, from a from more expensive rod, but it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you're going to 
get a better action because a lot of the same, or a lot of the rods are uh, are built off the same blanks. And uh, so, like companies like, well, let's just say this: large, very expensive fly rods. Typically, um, you're paying for the fit and finish. You're not paying for the actual performance of the rod. Uh, dub is that Wee Nemo or Wenemo? Uh, sorry, I just started fly fishing this year. Um, and I have a five weight book to charter for striped bass, and the guide uses nine weight. That's a nine weight. I don't know what they're. It is a very different cast. Um, uh, a nine weight from a five weight. The biggest difference, if the guide knows what he's doing, it will cast the same style action. Now, if hypothetically a nine weight in a diamondback flex and a five weight in a diamondback flex um, are going to be the same. Uh, as far as the the flex go, as long as they're both the same taper. Um, if you're lining it the same way, so say you put a five weight on the five weight and nine weight on the nine weight, it should act the same way. It will just require more inertia to get started. Think about it. You're 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 trying to let that fly line load the rod, and so I would get very comfortable with the double haul. The double haul um, is. A really nice cast for large flies and and to try and get line speed. Line speed's your friend uh, on fast fish too. But you want it to be delicate. What's your favorite trout? My favorite trout. Oh boy. Um, now I guide a lot of steelhead, but my favorite trout is the brookie. Um, that's because most of the fish I catch in the regular basis are smaller than 18 inches, and brookies are beautiful. But if you're chasing big fish, I like fishing browns too because um, they're the most predatory piscivorous fish of the of the salmonids um, or salmonids rather and uh, so um, they typically will smash streamers and stuff what do you think of the change in the turkey season um, is it, now that's referencing New York to be a hundred percent honest um, I stopped turkey hunting probably three or four years ago um, I always did it with my bow uh, the reason being is because I make more money guiding and fishing um, and uh, so I chase my passion by chasing chrome. And so, uh, you know, and also I love fly fishing in the winter too because nobody's on the water and you can still catch fish. But don't tell everybody around me because uh, then I'll have to fight shoulder to shoulder. Um, do you guys want to see any of the gear or anything? Or I'm, I'm been in a squat position here and I hate to, let's see. I always use a four weight and recently got an eight weight for bass and haven't really noticed much of it. Exactly. If you if you line it similarly similarly uh, and it's the same rod or whatever, same taper, fast action, whether it be or or full mm -hmm. flex, mid flex, tip flex, um, it's gonna cast similar. I mean, technique is technique. You know, I mean, not until you really switch it up and go with like a like a fiberglass or bamboo rod do you really notice any difference. And I'm sorry, my knees were killing me, guys. In uh, in timing or anything like that, so uh, I would say it's going from a four weight to an eight weight. That's pretty brave. I I'm a I, it's everyone. There's, there are two kind of camps. There's a, a four six eight and there's a um, a five seven nine. And it's taken me a few years, but I'm definitely in. The, if I'm going for trout, I'm a four weight fan. Unless I'm unless I'm I'm t uh, tight line nymphing, then I'm going with a three weight. And um, gate or er, Winemo. I'm sorry. Uh, Maybe phonetically spell it out for me. Um, uh, let's see. And then for steelhead, around here, I like sevens, um, seven weight because, um, well, in a diamond back because it, it's got enough backbone that I can really throw it on the hip and lead them, but it's really sensitive still. And then I also have nine weights for salmon, though. So uh, I do salmon fish as well. Um, and also it's nice to troll for, or to throw for musky, too. Um, Let's see, trip, uh, guy, let's see, advice for prep, tri trip prep. Now, is it, can you enlighten me as to what kind of trip it is? Are you going long couple days? Are you going, um, like salt? Uh, oh, leaving for Colorado Saturday. How long are you going, Cameron? Um, because if you're going to be gone for a while, let's see, I'm assuming you're taking a guided trip. If you are, then that'll change completely what I'm going to suggest. Um, in the meantime, while I get that answer, uh, favorite bass lure? It's hard to beat a topwater bass bait, man. It's really hard. Like, throwing frogs or mice is really fun. Um, for a fly, I'll throw a mouse. And for conventional, I'll throw um, 
a frog, but my my go to um, is definitely uh, flipping jig. I really enjoy jigging, um, or Texas or or an ultra. Oh, okay, take that back. A full Texas rig with about a five eight ounce, uh, maybe a little lighter, three eight ounce, and uh, really just swimming it in with a with um, with a. Uh, my finesse rigs and stuff, I really like that too. Basically, um, when the spawn is on, or pre-spawn rather, and they're bet or, or pre-betting and pre-spawn, I'll, I'll take it anyway. It doesn't really matter to me um, what uh, what they're biting as long as they're biting. Uh, Norman Skill or Lawson's? No, I have not. Um, I don't get out that way very often, buddy. Um, and uh, it's a shame, but my... Uh, six days fishing, probably four days. Um, no guide I've been before, but fly fishing for all kinds of... Okay. Um, if you've been fishing a bunch and you, you understand what, what to expect for fishing, I'm assuming that you have all of your gear. Um, my suggestion, if you want to enjoy your stay, uh, boot dryers or some kind of silicone or silicon uh, like pouches and I think I usually have a couple sitting around here somewhere you know those things that come in like beef jerky they dry out your boots pretty well too and they make you especially if, you, if you've got the beef jerky ones they make your boots smell awesome um, if you're into beef jerky uh, get a quality uh, pack and make sure you pack enough food and water I know, you know, especially in the summer. If you're going in the summer, man, make sure you have enough water. I know it's common sense, but um, nothing makes somebody ornery <laughs> like like being dehydrated. Uh, oh, hey, before we keep going, guys, if you wouldn't mind just liking the video. I know there's four of you on right now, and I have two likes on the video. <clears throat> I know it sounds trivial, but it really does make a difference to us who make content because it helps push the channel into new light and for new people. And I appreciate everybody who that likes the, the video. Um, also, uh, the more information and views I can get out to the people, the more views that the videos have, um, the more likely that other deals can get struck up for you guys. Like, um, I don't know if you check out all my videos, but I have a ton of different discount codes and stuff for you. Um, and yes, some of those do help fund some of the channel, but like, you know, stuff like it's, I, most of the stuff here, I'm trying to think with the exception of the Tatula that I had that showed you earlier, um, uh, with the exception of that, I mean, and the baits, obviously, um, I, I pay for everything. And so the funds that I get directly from YouTube typically go right back into the channel. Um, or, or I, I, I will lie last, last, uh, Time that I actually did make any money from YouTube, um, I put it into <laughs> into diapers, um, and so that really helps out, um, especially considering that you know I, I don't do this full time, but I want to do it in a way that is educational for you guys. <laughs> so, do you have any questions for fishing, or do you want to see any of the gear, or what I would recommend for gear, or do you guys want to see some cool stuff like? My grandfather left me a bunch of stuff. I can show you um, a lot of the guys who were into archery. Um, let's see. This is I'm teching some bows for some people. This is a PSC prophecy. Um, I have another. Uh, there's a Matthews put away too. I don't really feel like digging it out though. Um, I don't think it's it's you know courteous to do that either. What's your best tip on getting started on fishing and hunting YouTube channel? Um, I think the best advice would be don't. <laughs> um, do not get into it for anything other than an extremely slow hobby. Um, but one thing I also think too is is don't don't get so wrapped up in gear and in camera gear that you sacrifice your content. So what I mean by that is, I mean, I've seen so many people, like, even people, I, my peers that I work with on these channels that have incredible equipment. I'm talking, like, seven, $800 cameras, but their vision and their ability is so poor. Uh, like, for example, um, somebody who can...
take something like I shoot on a on a hundred and eighty dollar you know camcorder. It's a Canon Vixia five R five hundred. Um, I don't even know if it's that much anymore. I bet you can get it for one hundred and twenty dollars. Um, it might sound like a lot, and it might be for somebody who's young, but that was my big investment back in the day, and I feel that if you can edit a killer video with footage you get from a $120 um, camera um, and still produce content that people like to watch, then that speaks volumes when compared to some people who um, have a $700 camera and don't know how to edit. Um, also, pay attention to what people want. I mean, if, if you're noticing that people ask a lot of questions about something, maybe it's interesting content. I mean, it might be a, a small niche or demographic, but it might be something that's interesting to some people. Um, another one would be, uh, you know, try to be consistent. So if you want to actually gain a following, be consistent, but don't expect it to be fast. Um, we'll come back to this topic again because I enjoy talking about it, but um, there's a question about uh, how many rods do I have? I have 22 rods. Um, how many do I use? Now, I would say, if I were to say, if I, I'll count the ones that I used at least once this year. Um, have I ever used a bamboo rod? If so, does it live up to the hype? I have four bamboo rods. Two of them are headwaters. One is a um, is a Montague, uh, nineteen twenty nine Montague, and then one is a custom piece that I built. And then one, I take it back. I have another one after that too. And one is an eBay special that I have a lender to somebody who um, will uh, that likes them. Are you talking about hype as far as cost, or are you talking about hype as far as action? Because yes, I am a firm believer that if I'm going dry fly fishing, I will fish bamboo. In small creeks, I will fish bamboo. Um, even sometimes still waters. You know, if I'm throwing a bass bug, I will fish bamboo. Action, absolutely. It is 100% different. Um, it is, di and it is different than fiberglass. I have a fiberglass rod too, but it is definitely different than fiberglass. Um, if I were to count how many rods I own or that I've used, of those 22 rods, how many have I used this year? Twelve of those rods I've used this year. The reason I don't some I, I didn't use is because they're antique pieces, um, and or they were given to me from, by my grandfather, and they're a little older, and I haven't considered them retired, but I'm I'm don't think I'm going to fish them. I would feel comfortable fishing panfish for them. I just don't want to break one because they're actually I mean they're literally antiques, antiques. Um, let's see. Let me check out these questions again. Um, I can't scroll. Oh yeah, I can. Okay, we can go back to the YouTube question. Um, another question, another tip would be, um, you know, I am, I hate with a passion that that GoPro either head or chesty view. Absolutely hate it. Hate seeing just your hands. And I did a, a, a camera review. Um, a little while ago, uh, a couple days ago, be, that have that view, and it's just nauseating. I mean, I only did it that way so that people who were looking to maybe purchase a camera could see what it looked like from that perspective. But I cannot stand that that GoPro like chesty or head view. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, use a GoPro. I would really like to see either a body piece like up above your back shoulder, or I mean, a, a tripod. And again, not saying telling you what to do. I just know that I personally get nauseated by only watching hands and not seeing the rod tip. I'm a, I'm a sucker for seeing a hook set over here or over here and seeing somebody play a fish. Um, and in fact, if you can work with a buddy who doesn't want to 
doesn't want to be part of the channel, just wants to help you. Um, they can be a filmographer for you, cinematographer for you, uh, and I have a couple friends who help me and some young guns who help me with that too. Any more questions, guys? We're at about 35 minutes here, and um, I'm using this kind of as an escape a little bit uh, from from a crying infant. So if uh, you guys have more questions, I'll stay out here and chat with you guys. Um, if not, the garage at least has to be cleaned up at least a little bit. Oh, one, one other thing I wanted to show you is one of the, my, my, my most viewed video, which has, I think, well over 100,000 views, I think, um, is shows this, this reel right here. And it's a bu super budget, like 12 bucks. It still is phenomenally holding up just as well. Very little play, if anything. And it's that Eichelin. I don't even know if they make it anymore, but it was an eBay special for like 12 bucks. And that's what I'll be throwing that, um, that intermediate line on soon for maybe some small bass or whatever. But um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, I don't want to bore you guys. I don't want to feel like I'm digging, but I am digging for content. Because if you guys, anybody who's in right now who hasn't liked the video, if you wouldn't mind liking the video. Also, if you guys could share the video, that would be awesome. Um, just because it, again, oh, question here. Any recommendations for a flyer under 100 bucks? I have so many. Um, my, my biggest recommendation is if you're buying a fly rod, and I didn't always used to do this, but it definitely makes a difference, and you travel around, and you take the car, and you're not walking with your rod, I would definitely recommend something with a warranty. And so here's where uh, shameless, selfish promotion for these companies comes from. Diamondback Fly Rods, um, the same company who makes uh, this flex right here, this beautiful, gorgeous-looking uh flex rod right here, um, the one that I catch, caught all my steelhead on this year, and um, also uh, a bunch of bass on, uh, pike as well, they make an affordable economy rod that has a lifetime warranty, um, and it's, the name escapes me, but it's, I think it's $150, I know it's not under $100, but for $50 you get a lifetime warranty, also, the company Wetfly makes a nitrogen 2 rod that um, is I think hundred and ten or hundred and twenty dollars with a no questions asked warranty as well um, I haven't fished that rod I fished the glass rod I haven't fished the other rod uh, the nitrogen 2 but I know that they stand by what they do and that it uh, they're they're stellar dudes and um, they're, they're good guys uh, for those of you who are new to the channel I also um, how many LTB lures do you have? Oh boy. I had so many that I gave probably a year's worth away to local kids who in clubs and things. Again, I'm a teacher. I Diamondback, yes. Um, Diamondbackfishing.com or Diamondback Rods. Diamondbackrods.com. Um, and so I, I'm a teacher and so I love giving back and so I gave almost a year's worth of baits to local kids and stuff and organizations, donations and things. And um, it's just, it, it means more to me to have kids out there fishing than it does to, uh, to, to have this plethora of baits that may not even, you know, that I might not personally use because I don't fish them well. You know, like, I fish a jerk bait all right. I fish a, um, I don't fish deep diving prank baits too often because I don't own a boat yet. Um, I'm, I'm working to try and get a boat, but I don't own one yet. And so I uh, typically, you know, will uh, we'll donate those away. Um, another uh, possibility, if for those, for whoever was asking about bamboo, those headwater rods right there, um, they have two different lines. There's the, uh, and both of them, the most expensive one they sell is under 500 bucks, which is a lot of money, but for bamboo it's not. Um, they also have prototype rods that will sell at 50% what they would ask someone for. And so they're sometimes out, you know, 150 bucks for a brand new handmade bamboo rod. So headwatersbamboo.com also is an option if you wanted to look at bamboo. They're, they're kind of a sponsor. I mean, they gave me those rods to test out and to make content with, but they don't pay me. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to do one more video with them, but uh, they don't pay me, so... Um, it's, uh, 
they're definitely worth a check pick though because they pay, they do cast beautifully. Um, let's see, there are five of us. Hey, if you're new back to the video, please like the video, give it a thumbs up, and um, please share the video with others as well because I you know I want to educate as many as I can. This is a candid snapshot into my personality, my life, and so uh, I appreciate you guys sticking around with me and asking questions and stuff. So even if my background is, you know, because I'm you know. It's summertime, and I'm a teacher, and so um, I'm, I'm not able to be on my soapbox, you know. What do you suggest for video ideas? What do you mean? For, for you as a YouTube channel, one thing that I will never personally do is I don't personally believe in those gimmicky challenge videos like fishing with a gummy worm or using the rocket rod. It's just, it's, I'm not knocking anybody who does that because typically those people are the ones that have large channels. But I will not risk my integrity as an angler and an educator in doing those types of videos um, or getting the cops called on me or any of those things. Not knocking, again, anybody who does that. That's just not my forte. Um, I actually personally would have loved to get back into doing archery videos as well. Um, uh, but I know that most of my fan base wouldn't would would see that as a negative and potentially turn and leave. Um, so I would I would hope that maybe branching off. I'd love to do some bow fishing. Um, I'd love to do again. I told you I'm doing some salt, um, and uh, very soon um, I usually go down to the salt once a year. So every year I'm going to try and, and get a little better at saltwater fishing because. I've done it from a boat, but I've never done it from the surf, so uh, it should be interesting. Um, would you guys like to see my conventional tackle breakdown and show you kind of what I throw on each thing? I mean, while we're at it, and I can answer other questions fly-related as well while we're doing this, but... So, my first... Let's see. My, my big whooping stick, okay? Um, this is an Abel Garcia uh, Harold Earnsley like, signature series. Um, this is a 7-foot... Uh, medium heavy casting um, with a victory uh, seven to one. Um, I use this for top water uh, and I also use this for um, punching uh, really heavy stuff because it is my one of my heavier rods. Um, it also gives me some great leverage and um, it's it's fairly firm because it's a really fast action rod. And so if I need to pick up really quickly, um, it does that. I throw a 65 pound braid on this um, so that I can Hightail it out of there with a bit with a fish if I need to. Um, this one, uh, I think I paid this rod. I paid like thirty bucks for at a local kind of like flea market store, and the real an additional thirty bucks for at the same store. Same time, you have to work those angles, guys. Anybody can do anything. My one of my newer additions. Oh boy, is this Shishamo uh, six four one. Um, bait casting reel, and this was $29, $30, and I really dig this reel also. On a $25 uh, number 8 um, candy apple rod, and this is a 6'6", medium heavy, and this is my swim bait rod. Um, the reason I like it as a swim bait rod is because it does have, a, this rod has a nice uh, deep parabolic bend, and so whenever I'm, I'm running it, Whenever I set my hook, I can keep it going, and it's going to protect my line and stuff. And I have 20 pound on this, um, this uh, tri-line Invisalign, uh, or whatever it's called, like Elite Invisible or something like that. Um, I might switch the line out on this, but uh, I guess t only time will tell. Uh, for those of you guys who are just joining us, thank you for joining in. Um, I'm answering questions when they pop up, but in the meantime, I'm rambling and covering ground, please like the video, give it a thumbs up. Um, my oldest rod, take it back, my second oldest rod was actually a gift to me. This is an Apple Garcia Silver Max, um, and a Silver Max reel. Uh, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's a, yeah. Um, and so I use this as my all around, it's like a, I know it's not the ideal jigging rod, but uh, it's soft enough for me to flip and stuff with. Especially because I'm not super tall. I'm like 5'9 on a good day. And so, that bando, right? And so, this one's nice too because um, I can do a lot of different stuff with this. 
it's kind of an all-purpose. All if I needed to, I, if I carry one rod with me to the water, it'd be this one. Um, and also, a buddy of mine did some really cool custom art on it. Um, that's Jason Jason Bish over at Bisherman Custom Rods. Um, he's local over by me. Uh, awesome dude, great angler, and uh, just an all-around uh, fun guy to be around. Um, my newest, brand spanking newest addition to my vault, if you will, and I showed this earlier, is is this um, Daiwa Tatula, and let's see, wait, hold on, how do you attract more bites with a traditional dry fly, caddis or atoms? <clears throat> Are you looking for trout? Um, if that's the case, then I would suggest adding slack to your line. Um, there's a Facebook group that I, I started. It's f specifically for education um, in fly fishing. Uh, I'll put the link in the description when YouTube lets me, but um, I would add some slack to your line. Add a pile cast or um, a wiggle cast, uh, and that way, um, whenever, you know, it gives you more time on that dead drift and also allows the, the fly to spin like like sometimes you see uh, in, in, well, in naturals. So this is a, a Daiwa Tatula TWS 631 on a candy apple. Um, it's the same exact rod as, as before. Um, and I like I, I use this for spinner baits because of the parabolic bend, as well as um, the fact that if I need to, I can really lay the lay the wood to them if I, uh, with the medium uh, the, the medium heavy rod here. So uh, let's see. Uh, now on to let's see. This right here, <laughs> I used to work. Let's see, that, yeah, no problem, buddy. Um, this right here is my first ever rod. Um, I used to work at Gander Mountain before it closed, a long time ago, years and years, years ago, as a boat tech for a while. And so I got a killer deal on this Vortex. This is a, uh, let's see, it's a 6.6 six medium, and uh, I paired it with an Octane 30. Uh, this is basically um, like it's like a two, let's see, yeah, two twenty at, at point two five, and so I do all my finesse stuff with this. I used to have the uh, uh, GSX that came as, in the combo with the Gainer Mountain, and it did just well. It did just or swell. My biggest fish I ever caught was on that reel. This is just a little heavier duty, and it um, I know I have confidence in the, me the mechanism in this, and I run. Uh, eight pound on this mono no floral sorry and lastly um, for my conventional trout rod I have a Mitchell um, uh, Avocet uh, seven footer um, reason I go seven foot is because it's easier to drift and uh, I typically if I'm fit, trout fishing I will typically be um, fly fishing same thing with any pan fish or small fish but uh, I have the rod, and so I need to use it sometime. I have a bunch of other conventional stuff, conventional rods and stuff over there that uh, I'll use on occasion or when somebody comes to visit. But uh, for the most part, uh, I, I will cycle. Right now I'm cycling in my fly rods. If I'm using a four weight, I'm using my, um, this is a two piece, this is an old two piece, okay? This is an Abu Garcia signature. Nothing too fancy about this rod, but it launches. It launches, absolutely launches. I know four weight with a full wells, right? Launches flies. I, I've thrown size two streamers, like pike flies, um, with this quite a ways. If I'm fishing a three weight, I have a tight line nymphing rod by Max Catch. That's another one under 100 bucks. Max Catch Fishing. They don't have a warranty, I, I, I don't believe, though. Um, this is my favorite three-weight I own, though, uh, to cast. And this is a, a Three Forks by Cabela's. It's a nice little small stream rod. But typically, if I'm throwing a, a small stream rod, it's going to be that Headwaters four-weight. It's just killer. It's just killer. Um, if I'm going for bass or steelhead, I have my Diamondback Flex 7 weight, um, and uh, I'm hoping to be getting their new, their new one of their glass rods in soon. Same thing with Wet Fly. Wet Fly is sending a glass rod, I hope, sometime soon. Um, their uh, new Nitro Glass, it's just butter, and it's so cool looking too. Um, but uh, 
That, yeah, I mean, that's it, guys. I'm looking to... I, I'm working diligently to try and get a, a, a drift boat right now just to be able to film some really cool stuff. Um, both on the lake as well as on the river and so hopefully that shows up soon if you guys do have any more questions when the comment section does show up at the bottom don't do it in the in the in the, um, the chat um, but when it does show up in the comments like there's a comment section please ask away um, or go over to the Facebook you know Facebook page that is my kind of not fan page I hate to use you guys fans because you're my friends um, but make sure you uh, you ask any questions you want either in a message or on the page and I know that if you ask the question in public, then some other people can learn from that too. Um, I'll put some links in the thing below, in the comment section below, or not comment section, in the description, as well as some discount codes for you guys, obviously. Um, also, I don't know if you guys know this, and I hate to, I always hate to do this, but it's a way you can support the channel. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Super Chat, but whenever you are on right now and you look at Super Chat, Super Chat is a way that if you have a spare buck, um, and you want to have it designated for something, like say you want to say like, um, put this towards tying a crazy fly, and then so I'll buy the materials. You tell me what to buy, and I will buy a crazy fly, or I will cry, buy crazy materials for a fly. Or if you want a special like a special tutorial how to tie a fly, and I don't have the materials, I'll go pick that up. Um, or if you want to see more salts fishing, or like I was supposed to go to ICAST, but with the new baby, I couldn't afford the flight. I'm not gonna be a peddler. I'm not. But it's just an option for you guys if you want to support the channel. I appreciate it. And, if, you know, if, again, if you have any questions, make sure you guys ask them in the comments section. Use the discount codes. Get you guys some, some cool stuff. Fly Crate's another good one, too. LTB. You name it. I'll put them in the button in, in below. But uh, make sure you guys check it out. But in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great rest of your night, wherever that may be. And um, me too, buddy. And I hope you guys catch you guys on the flip side. And tight lines.